Good morning and welcome to our live event. Uh, my name is Elsa and I'm curator of the group here on Facebook, Women Healing from Emotional Abuse with Power, Passion and Pleasure. And I will probably also post this on my YouTube channel um, at Pleasure for Health. Um, so you can follow me in, in either one of those places. Um, I'm really uh, excited might be the wrong word, but I'm always excited to talk to you, uh, to you folks in my group. But uh, I'm excited today to talk a little bit about betrayal, because I think that um, many of us start to work on our healing journey and we want to jump to the healing part, right? The fun part, the part where we're actually getting better, where we're ha getting a new relationship, where we're having uh, good feelings. Um, we kind of want to jump to that and we don't really want to look at betrayal. And we definitely don't want to look at potentially where we've betrayed ourselves in the whole process of our victimhood journey, whatever that was for you. And um, it could be many things, um, you know, abuse and trauma and, uh, you know, all of those gradations of that can can come in. And so instead of wanting to sit with that, which is understandable, we don't want to sit with bad feelings. But if we're not able to look at the reality of what's happening, what's happened and to kind of piece together some of the connections for ourselves, we will end up reliving betrayal by others potentially you know we actually do get betrayed by others i'm not saying that doesn't happen but i can pretty much guarantee that the first betrayal was for yourself now that's not counting something um when you were a baby when you're very young you know potentially your caregivers your parents your family of origin whoever was caring for you potentially betrayed, you know, put that sort of betrayal story into your experience. But we continue to relive it because we're actually trying to heal. And I just want to um, read a, a little bit from um, this is actually a really good book, The Betrayal Bond, and it's by Patrick J. Kearns. And um, he did a lot of work on um, relationships and betrayal and um, abuse and all of that. Um, and that. And so I'm just going to read a little quote from his book here. For many survivors, the gateway to a spiritual life starts with a new relationship with oneself and with the growing network of relationships in the support community. So we, we do have to start relating to ourselves differently and to people in the community. And there's much I could say about, you know, uh, especially emotional abuse where they're, the abuser often tries to alienate you from yourself and from your community, from your friends. And this is a tactic, whether they're doing it on purpose or unconsciously, it's a tactic to take you away from yourself and from those people who really care about you and to betray, you know, to make it easier to betray you for you to betray yourself because you are distanced from those um, from yourself and from your own caretaking system. So in order to trust a higher purpose, it requires an essential trust of others. And many of us have issues with trusting others. We have to learn to do that. We have to carefully rebuild trust and it needs to start with trusting our own integrity. And when we trust our own integrity, that is not betraying ourselves. So we have to learn how to not betray our own self that we, you know, and the simplest um, example of this, I'm just going to kind of add into this is that, you know, when we tell ourselves, well, I'm not going to let, I'm not going to let them cross that line again, whoever the them is for you. I'm not, not going to let that, my, that boundary be crossed. Nobody's going to, you know, make me um, feel miserable about something I didn't do ever again. And then, you know, later that morning, somebody does that and you let them do it and you feel miserable. You do you see how you're kind of betraying yourself, your own integrity? You made a promise to yourself not to let certain boundaries be crossed. And then we let those boundaries be crossed now. That's not a victim blaming story. That's not to say, oh, slap your hand, you did that again. No, it's to say though, that there's something else deeper going on. 
that we have a need that we're that we have some story from probably early in our life that that hooks us in because we want it to be true so much you know for me i still remember the words with my ex was you know um you're so beautiful now i never believed i was beautiful and you know it might not sound that important to some people but to me it was like you know you you dream you envision as a little girl being beautiful having i wanted a i wanted a more beautiful name i wanted a beautiful dress i wanted more beautiful things um i wanted to be beautiful i wanted the you know the boys in my class in elementary school to like me and think i was beautiful and um you know i didn't i either wasn't open to it or i didn't have that experience and interestingly in my particular case i think that um you know my parents my mother in particular didn't have a particularly good relationship with beauty um she has a difficult relationship with beauty you know what is beauty you shouldn't have to dress nice or look nice or do anything like it should be the inside right it's beautiful but you know so we could go into why that felt like a betrayal in a way because but it is beautiful right if you see a princess and they have a beautiful dress like you know cinderella you put the beautiful dress on all of a sudden she's a princess right and it didn't matter that she was a beautiful person when she was back cleaning the house she was cleaning the house and nobody knew about her but when she put on the beautiful dress and went to the ball everybody met her and thought she was an amazing person so there was something about that and i've written about that in my uh, facebook group before so you can have a look for that the cinderella story um but that that gives us that betrayal of ourselves right so you know if if my mother had a difficult relationship with that then i took that on then i have a difficult relationship with beauty because i feel like i'm beautiful inside but nobody sees that and so um you know when somebody comes along and tells me i'm beautiful i am hooked into that whether that i should allow that to be hooked or not i want it to be true i want them to see the beauty that i know i have inside and so therefore i'm vulnerable to that be kind of betrayal and that kind of hook um until i learn to have integrity with myself and say but i know i'm beautiful and my outside and my inside match and i'm you know i feel good about that and that takes a long time to you know i i did a lot of work around my body and my image and um you know i would say there's still some things that i could do like buying clothes that really look nice on me um was a big i remember again you're getting a lot of my stories but this is the personal part helps right i remember going shopping for you know so my my story was that i i wore a burqa for a long time so i didn't have to deal with my image right so this was another interesting thing so when i finally got out of the relationship enough I went shopping for a dress. Now I hadn't shopped for a dress for probably 10, 15 years. And I went into the store and, you know, I told the lady, I don't know how to shop for a dress, like I don't know what looks good. And, you know, she was thrilled cuz she got to help me shop for a dress. So that was awesome. But, you know, it was it was an emotional time to just shop for a dress and look nice. Does this look nice? She picked out earrings that went with the dress and all that. And I went with it. I was able to at that point build on my own sense of integrity and and buy the dress and wear the dress and enjoy the whole experience of that and you know that took a long time so when we get betrayed by someone or sucked in by their seduction whatever that seduction story is that sucks you in it gives you that sense of whatever that hole is that you have you know and it may not be beauty for you it might be you know that I'm lovable it might be that I'm um uh, funny it might be that I'm intelligent like whatever those hooks are for you um that is really what draws you in and so you know we have to learn to trust ourselves when we stand up for ourselves to say yes you know what I don't need that person to tell me I'm beautiful I know that and therefore you can tell me I'm beautiful and and thank you very much but it's not a hook anymore for me so um You know when we risk taking a stand we learn to trust and in the trauma bond we've talked about trauma bonding before if you were unfaithful to yourself and someone hurt you then by being true to yourself you're going to heal so out of that 
healing, we have this spiritual connection to trusting in the universe, trusting in others in a more, uh, you know, what's the word? It's gone out of my head now, but like a discerning way, right? We're not just trusting everyone blindly because we so want that to be true. We're start starting to say, well, I know in myself who I am. And then, you know, I'm going to be discerning by who I put in my life out here. So that's just a really interesting way to, to look at this and this kind of seductive power of someone that is going to betray you because you're not being aware of your own self. And it happens in a number of ways. It might happen with fear. They might seduce you with fear because you're afraid of being abandoned or alone or um you know something like that it might be a, a seduction of power sometimes we don't want to grow up and take responsibility for ourselves it's hard to pay the rent and have a job and you know feed ourselves and um, be good people in the community and look after things i don't know so part of us wants someone else to do that so it's seductive if someone comes along and says sweeps you off your feet and says they're going to do all these great things for you um, that's seductive if you don't really want to take power and control in your own life, right? Uh, intimacy can be seductive, you know, I'm, if you're afraid of intimacy, if you're, if you find it difficult, you really want intimacy, but you don't know how to get there. Um, somebody comes along and, you know, the, the tantric practitioner, you know, I've heard that story many times. The, uh, you know, the man who seems like, or the woman or whoever, seems like they're able to have this amazing intimacy. But, you know, and you crave that, right? You, you aren't willing to kind of get intimate with yourself. You just want to have, jump straight to the, the uh, intimate partner. And you lose yourself through that as well. You let go of that ability to just, wait a second, I want to get intimate with my own self. And the one that hooks me a lot too was the, spiritual and like values so if i valued um love and connection and um you know being a good person uh, those types of things then you may get taken in by the seduction of someone who's seems like they're they talk like they're going to you know make the world a better place or this you know the way that they do things and you kind of get drawn into cults like that quite a lot you know they're talking about the way that the world will be better and you know other the betrayal of ourself is is just that goes along with that first stage because we are not willing to look at our own hurt our own sorrow our own grief our own pain we just want to have it heal quickly by having someone out there do that so one thing and i'll give you a little um exercise to do this is a hard exercise all of this healing work is hard, by the way. It's not going to be a magic pill like this. But if you write down the people, at least five to ten people, as many people as you can think, and honestly, probably everybody in your life has betrayed you on some level. So you're going to write the name of the person. And I start off with my mother because, <laughs> you know, your mother betrays you in some sense, probably. And your dad and my my ex and you know um my friend and my teacher da, 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 da. so you're gonna put the person's name and then you're gonna put um what did they tell you was true like what did they promise you um what story did they tell you was true and then what what were they really trying to get probably for themselves like where did where was the betrayal what what were they really wanting for themselves so I mean, I've, I, I was just uh, playing around with this and I was like, well, my mom so said if, it, if I was true to myself that people would appreciate me for me. That was the story that she was living, by, trying to live into. And she told me that without really having any much evidence that that was true, but she told me that's the way the world is. And I think what she wanted was validation of her own journey and that you know, um, she sort of was living through me as a, as a emissary of her trials and errors on her own intimacy and, and relational issues. Cause it didn't really work. Right. So, um, but she wanted to validate and put forward her idea. And so that's what she promised was that was a good way of, that was the way the world worked. And it wasn't really, 
um, not completely. Uh, so there was a betrayal there. I think my dad did stories like, you know, if I worked hard or if I picked uh, a, the an intelligent path through my education that I would be successful um, like he was, <laughs> you know, and again, I think it wasn't so much about me and learning who I was. It was a validation of his life path. And I think he wanted to feel validated that he had made good choices and that he had made a successful career and that we um, respected and loved him for that. And so that's what came across. So he promised that if I did that, then I would also have that. And that also isn't necessarily true. Wasn't really true for me, at least not, not then. You know, we have to forge our own path. And it would have been more helpful to have a parent that said, you know, what are your gifts? What are you really drawn to? How could we work with that? Being successful in life could mean different things. What does success mean to you? Like it would have been helpful to have had a guidance system that, that acknowledged who I was and didn't just want me to validate their own life path, right? So that gives you an idea of what my parents did. Like I said, my, my ex was like, you know, if you're a good wife and a mother, um, that life will be, you know, really um, peaceful and joyful and you'll get a lot out of it. And that that was true to a certain point because I am, I am glad I had my children and, you know, there was a certain truth to that. But the betrayal was that you know, he wasn't, he wasn't actually going to create that with me. And he said, oh, we'll create this family together. And he wasn't really actually invested in that. So there was a betrayal there. And he was like, well, you create that nice picture over there and I'll just come and go whenever I want. Right. So it was for him to just kind of have that, that family over here that he could say he was a part of, but also kind of skip out whenever he wanted. And so, you know, there was a interesting, um, Thing there so try making your list and having a look at you know where did you feel betrayed by whom and what was their story and what were they really wanting out of it and the reason I ask you to, to maybe look at doing that is because this is going to actually give you some information about your core wounds that attract this type of betrayal and so for me those three examples I gave you of my uh, close people to me that were betrayals, I would say were betrayals of value and spirit. Like nobody really looked at me to say, what do I value? They just said what they valued and then they wanted me to, to do that, you know, kind of validate their value, right? So they weren't looking, I was, I betrayed myself because I thought I was learning to value myself, but really I was just taking on whatever value they told me I should take on. So, you know, I wanted to have a life that was valuable and I wanted to have a life that had a spiritual direction and I didn't come from my own self. I didn't take the time to learn that. I just took on whatever someone else said their value was or you should value this, right? And I just took it on. So I was vulnerable to that because I did want to have a spiritual life, but I was vulnerable because I didn't actually learn what that was for me, at least not for a long time. And, um, and so I just took on other people's that they were seductive. If somebody else was really sure that this was the way to have a meaningful life, I would take it on. So other people might find that there's seductions in other ways, like I said. So it's interesting to look at these, you know, what are your, your core holes for you as a whole integral being that is what you're getting hooked into. So we have to develop this trustworthy sense of self. And then one, once we have that, we actually have to be able to look at our life and say what is real and what is not, right? So um, the illusion versus reality kind of thing. So a lot of times we go to the illusion or we go to the, the betrayal, we go to the seduction of the betrayal because we actually don't want to look at there's a loss there. We lost hope. We lost our dream. We lost our sense of self. And we need to grieve that. We need to feel the pain of that loss of connection with our own self. And if we don't want to go there, we avoid the pain by creating illusions. And when we create illusions, it's kind of the same thing as a betrayal. We betray ourselves because now we're telling us this is true when it really isn't true. Um, 
So I'll just walk you through a little bit what, what happens sometimes with a relationship in this way. So the first contact with your, with your abuser, let's say, might be something like they make a promise to you in the form of a story. We're going to live happily ever after. I'm going to take you to Portugal and I have a mansion there and da da da. Or they're kind to you. They, they're like, oh, you're, you work so hard. You're a single mom. I'm going to take you out to dinner. I'm going to treat you so well. You're going to be my queen, right? Or they have compassion for you. Oh my gosh, I, that must be so hard what you're doing. And I can't believe da da da. Um, or they have a noble cause. So whatever that promise was, that's probably the first thing that they, they lead with, right? And they're pretty good. A lot of these manipulative people are pretty good at trying out a little bit of something and they can see when you get hooked in and then they latch onto that story. And if you, it would be so interesting to actually record some of these initial conversations with these, you know, manipulators because they probably actually like test a few things and they, they click onto the one thing that you attach to and then they go with that. But the, if you had re went back and listened to the recording, you'd probably hear that they were kind of fishing. They were fishing for that. And so they're fishing for what's gonna hook you and they hook you and now you're hooked. So that's the illusion as they tell you the story. And then your vulnerability so you had a, a, a hole i was calling it or or an unmet need in your own self and you're vulnerable to that particular promise um and you should give up everything about yourself for that promise because that's that's the vulnerability so the reality is that you have something that they hooked you you know you have a hook uh what do you call it like a snack <laughs> You have a hole that they can hook you through. So what is that? You want to become clear about the reality of what, what, what that was. And when I talk to women on the phone, you know, I do consults for women that want to work with me. It's often, you know, your mother was sick when you were five years old and you, you're looking for a mother, right? Or um, you never had the chance to play. And so along comes Mr. Da Da Da, who takes you out and does really fun things and you finally get to play. And when you were a kid, you were growing up, you had to be super responsible, right? There's some hook there. So that requires a little bit of work. And if you want help with these working through this stuff, I have an amazing um, program that I put women through that helps you do that. Um, sometimes it's helpful to have an external pair of eyes and ears to help you on this. But then, the, so then, so the reality is that you would try to do that. Then the next illusion, um, the victimizer validated the promise in some way. So they've made this promise. You're going to live happily ever after. We're going to have this amazing life. Um, and you believe the things that that were presented. So how did they get your confidence? How did they keep you reeled in, so to speak? How did they do that? Did they, you know, um, show you pictures of their mansion did they um you know you could take it to the extreme and you get the point like um i actually <laughs> sadly was taken in by one of these online hoax people after my relationship i obviously needed another lesson in this because i did have another lesson um you know and they'd send pictures of themselves that probably weren't real they said well definitely weren't real they send pictures of their house or their car or their bike or their place or where they live or their job or the all the things none of which is real but if you're hooked into that illusion that oh this person could give me the life that i always wanted this kind of ease i wouldn't have to worry about money i wouldn't have to worry about you know all the things so how did they keep you real in? And then the first betrayal comes along when their real intention becomes clear because they start abusing you. Now you're hooked. You've been reeled in. Now, you know, all of a sudden, oh, I need $5,000 because, you know, um, my, my payment hasn't come through with this wealthy client. It's going to come through next week for a hundred grand, but I just need to pay off my, you know, my bill my tax or something and it needs to be paid by friday can you lend me five thousand dollars now that's kind of a financial version um could be any other type of version you know i just need this or you know can you i'll just move in with you because my mansion over here is not ready yet <laughs> you know and 
you say it now, you can kind of, you laugh and you think it sounds ridiculous, but I've been there too. I was taken in totally by these types of manipulators. So their real intention starts to become clear because you, you, you get abused, you give them the money and the next week they don't have it. They don't have the money to pay you back. They don't have, a, you know, they tell you, I'm going to take you on a wonderful date and you know, you end up going to their place and it's a, it's a, you know, it's a mess and you, you offer to help clean up their apartment or something like that. And it's not the romantic date they promised, but they're like, oh, next time we'll do that. But this, we just had to do this first, you know, that kind of thing. And then they re-seduce you. So they add an explanation to the story so that the abuse is understandable. Um, so how did they revalidate that story? You know, they're going to keep the story going. How do they do that? That's the illusion. The reality is you get abused again and then it's like, okay, well, you have such a, you have such a kind heart and you know, I know that you, you've been through hard times. You can understand when I've, I've got, you know, hard times right now, like all of a sudden my monstrous ex came and took this and da da da. Now I have nothing, whatever the story is, they, 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 um, appeal to your kind heart. And they tell you, oh, but you're such a kind person. You would never do that to me. You would never leave. You would never leave a guy just because he didn't have the stuff or whatever it is. So you start saying, you know, and you start paying for everything, right? I've heard this story. Trust me, I've heard this story many times. You know, you start paying for the dates. You have the car. You drive everywhere. You're, you're basically, you know, the, the relationship. There is, there is no the other person. But then they reframe it to you and they, they say, oh, no, no worries. Like, it's only a little bit of gas. Like, why are you complaining? It's not that much. We're not doing anything extravagant. Not like I would do for you when, when I get my private jet back. I'm going to fly you to the, you know, Paris. But, you, you know, you're just, we're just driving to the next town or whatever. And they minimize your costs, right? And so that's the illusion again. And then the reality is that, you, you know, you're getting beaten down and now all of a sudden you can't pay your rent or do anything and you're getting sick and the stress is getting to you and now you're off work because you're on stress leave and it's going down really quickly and you realize that you can't deal with this. So there's the reality, right, that a lot of people get to. And you can see how it's this like splitting between the illusion and the reality. Like they're telling you it's this way and you're feeling like it's this way and you go back and forth and you've kind of split apart those two things. And so the betrayal is that you don't honor your own sense of, wait a second, this is the reality and this is what I'm feeling and this is the actually the reality. And you know, what is making it hard for you to actually take in that the person is, you know, betraying you or that you're betraying yourself, your own feelings about this reality. So we have to commit to reality at all costs. And Honestly, the cost can all often pretty much always we, will, we won't say absolutely always, but pretty much always going to make those people angry with you. They're going to change things for you. People won't believe your reality. They won't believe your tr truth. So you tell the truth about your reality and the people that want you to stay in that victim place, whether it's your family members or your, you know, your lover, or your partner, your ex, however, they want you to stay in that illusion with them. And if you step into reality, they're not, they're not going there with you. So you may feel like betrayed because now they're not, they're not validating your reality. Well, don't look to them for validating your reality because they are invested in you staying in their illusion. They don't want to see your reality. So that can feel like a betrayal too. And at that point, it is, it probably vital to have, you know, your coach or your therapist or your new friends or support group that can help you stay with your reality, your version of reality that is coming to you that you're like, oh shit, like this is actually what I'm feeling and doing and I'm getting sick here or I'm losing all my money or uh, I'm not going to have anything left. And, you know, for me too, I got to that point, I was like, I'm in a deep hole and if I don't get out of here pretty quick, I'm never getting out of here. And you know, that really becomes uh, apparent. And at that point you need support in your reality. Your, your, you know, when you're really trying to do, do those changes. So 
Hence, having a support group like this on Facebook, listening to videos of other people, understanding what you're going through. Now, the understanding, again, is not the answer. It's not going to change things. Just because you know up here doesn't change your life. It doesn't change you. So when you need to really integrate yourself, you need to come back to your own body. You need to um, get a sense of what you're really feeling, which is probably old pain. To be honest, it's old pain and grief. 99% of the time, it's old pain and grief that we haven't processed. And so finding a therapist or a coach or somebody that you can work with, body worker, that helps you process that can bring you home to yourself. And literally coming home to yourself and the integrity of who you are and the reality of you and, you know, yourself, capital S, is how you overcome betrayal. Because now you're no longer betraying your own self. You are standing with yourself. You're supporting your own self. So that was a lot of information and I know it, it was a little all over the place. However... It's a big topic. There's a lot of inner work there and there's a lot of ways we get hooked back into the illusion. There really is. Whether it's our own betrayal of ourselves, betrayal of others, betrayal of friends that we thought were friends that don't end up being friends when, when we get, you know, when we're going through our hard times, all of a sudden no friends want to talk to you. This happened, actually, I'll give you an example. In a church setting, this woman was, um, you know, opening up about the reality of this relationship with the minister that was abusive and when she she thought telling the truth about this her friends would support her everybody in the church turned their back on her everyone not one single person stood by her why not because they're horrible people but because of the shame of going to a church and hearing that the minister was doing these horrendous things yet they were going and they hadn't seen it and, you know, all of a sudden they have to, like, their whole worldview has to change. And the shame stopped them supporting her. And so, fortunately, she had some other support outside and a support group to, to move through that. But nobody in her community wanted to support her reality. The, the reality that this minister was abusive, abusively in a relationship with her. So, those things happen all the time. And that is a betrayal, you know, through people's shame. Right. So there's so many reasons why why that happens. So finding your, this work and starting to move through it is is difficult. Uh, it's it's simple, but it's not easy. And I would invite any of you who are really thinking about, you know what, it's time. Like I'm in that hole. I need to get out before I'm, you know, buried in all of this um, abuse, whether it's financial, sexual relational, emotional, like there's nothing left of you to give if you stay there for too much longer, then please do reach out. Um, I'll put the link in the comments where you can book a call. It's a free call with me. Um, no obligation. We'll just look at your particular situation and see if there's, you know, what's the next step for you? Whether that is, you know, working um, on a little exercise, you could just email me what you're working on, whether it's joining my writing group once a week, we do some writing and healing that way, whether it's getting into my um, more um, impactful coaching program, um, whether it's a book that I can recommend, uh, you know, there's no obligation. We'll just kind of look at your particular situation and see where we can go from there. Because this is, you know, it's, it's work. It takes time. And um, for those of us that are you know, on the same journey, hopefully a couple steps ahead or at least doing something up here uh, that we can reach back and, and say, here's a hand, you know, come, come with us. I absolutely know that if you're watching this video and you've made it to this point that you are um, an amazing being and that you have gifts to offer the world. And so getting in touch with yourself and what those are from your sense of self and not betraying yourself your life purpose, you know, all the things that you're here to do, um, you want to become um, aware of and have some empowerment, some choice in your own self to do that. I would love to be a, a helping hand on that journey for you. So reach out if you would like. I'll put the link in the comments. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, um, 
if you comment on it or you just say what it, what was the, the, the takeaway for you from this video, then more people will see this video. So that would be an amazing gift to your fellow uh, journey journeyers on this path of healing. You know, comment on the video so that Facebook or YouTube or whatever puts puts this in front of more people. And I, I thank you so much for joining me this morning. And I look forward to talking to you again soon.